hi if you're new here how is everyone i hope everyone is staying safe today's video is extremely graphic and disturbing your discretion is advised if you cannot handle gruesome cases and extremely graphic things especially with children please do not watch today's video is about the infamous serial killer albert fish again viewer discretion is advised this man had many nicknames so you might hear me calling him some during this video or naming them i hope everyone enjoys today's video and i hope this keeps you entertained even for a few minutes who was albert fish he was born as hamilton fish in washington dc to randall fish his father was 75 years old when he was born Fish was the youngest child and he had three living siblings, Walter, Annie, and Edwin. He wished to be called Albert after a deceased sibling and tried to escape the nickname Ham and Eggs that he was given at an orphanage in which he spent many of his early years. Many of his family members had mental illness. His brother was in an asylum, his uncle was diagnosed with mania, and his mother experienced regular hallucinations. When Albert was young, his father died of a heart attack. Fish's mother put him into an orphanage. The caretakers abused the children and even encouraged the other children to hurt each other. Eventually, this is where Fish discovered that he enjoyed physical pain. The beatings would often give him erections for which the other orphans teased him. There was also a lot of sexual abuse going on at the orphanage. By 1879, his mother got a government job and was able to look after him. However, his various experiences before this had affected him. He started a homosexual relationship at the age of 12 in 1882 with a telegraph boy. The boyfriend also introduced Fish to sexual practices such as drinking urine and eating feces. Fish began visiting public baths where he could watch boys undress and spent a great portion of his weekends there. Eventually, his sadomasochistic tendencies led him to an obsession with self-mutilation. He would regularly embed needles into his groin and abdomen and flog himself with a nail-studded paddle. By 1890, Fish had arrived in New York City, and he said he became a male prostitute. He also said he began raping young boys, a crime he kept committing even after his mother arranged a marriage in 1898. He was married to a 19-year-old woman, had six children. Albert, Anna, Gertrude, Eugene, John, and Henry Fish. He was then arrested for embezzlement and sentenced to incarceration in Sing Sing in 1903. He regularly had sex with men while in, in prison. Throughout 1898, he worked as a house painter, and he said he continued molesting children, mostly boys under six. He later re-encountered an incident in which a male lover took him to a waxworks museum, where Fish was fascinated by bisection of the penis. Soon after, he developed a morbid interest for castration. Ten days after their initial meeting, Fish lured Keaton into an abandoned farmhouse under the pretense of a get-together. When Keaton arrived, he found himself locked inside. For two weeks, Fish tortured Keaton. The budding killer mutilated the other man's body and cut off half of his penis. And as suddenly as he arrived, Fish disappeared, leaving Keaton with a $10 bill for his trouble. In January 1917, his wife left him for a handyman who boarded with the Fish family. Following this rejection, Fish began to hear voices. For example, he once wrapped himself up in a carpet, explaining that he was following the instructions of John the Apostle. He was now a single parent, responsible for raising six children alone. He claimed he never abused them during their lifetime, however continuously abused other young children, mostly boys. He taught his children sadistic games to play on him. He let his children spank him with a paddle and also invited their friends to do it as well. Fish was also beginning to develop an obsession with cannibalism. To prepare himself for consuming human bodies, he began to eat raw meat. He often invited his children to share. In 1919, his obsession with torture and cannibalism had brought him to contemplate murder. He began to look for vulnerable children, such as intellectually disabled orphans or homeless children. He would claim at his trial in, in later readings that God was speaking to him commanding him to torture and consume young children. He scoured ads in local papers and put out by families looking for someone to perform housework or young men looking for work. Edward Budd was looking for work on a farm or in the country. Fish was planning on hiring Edward and bringing him out to his country house to torture him. 
However, Fish ended up changing his mind when he saw little Grace, Edward's sister, standing behind her parents. He had a new plan and didn't waste any time. Whilst discussing the imaginary work that Edward would undertake, Fish casually mentioned that he was in town to visit a niece and attend her birthday party. He asked if little Grace would like to join him. Albert Fish, the unassuming looking stranger, convinced her parents Delia and Albert Budd to let him take her daughter along to his niece's birthday party. They never saw her again. Fish took 10-year-old Gracie, dressed in her Sunday best, to his house upstate, the same one he intended to use as a torture chamber for her brother. According to the letter, which was sent six years later after Grace's disappearance, it was sent to Delia Budd which contained confessions and also what happened to Gracie. Fish hid in an upstairs bedroom naked so he would not get blood on his clothing while Grace picked wildflowers in the yard. Then he called her inside. When she screamed at the sight of him, he grabbed her before she could flee. I'm going to read out parts from the letter. Viewer discretion is advised. How she did kick, bite, and scratch. I choked her to death, then cut her into small pieces so I could take the meat to my rooms, cook, and eat it. It took me nine days to eat her entire body. That was not the full letter as I did not feel comfortable reading out some parts. The full letter is online. How did he get caught? The paper he had written the letter on happened to be a piece of stationery from New York Private Chauffeur's Benevolent Association. Police inquired the company and found out the paper had been left behind by a janitor from the company at the rooming house he'd been staying at. At the same rooming house, a man named Albert Fish was renting a place. Upon learning that Fish bore a strong resemblance to Frank Howard, who was his fake name, Grace Bud's kidnapper, the police sent up an interview. To their surprise, Fish confessed in an instant, practically tripping over himself to reveal the precise details of what he had done to Grace Bud, as well as dozens of other children. But in the end, only three children, including Grace, could be concretely proven to be his victims. In the interview, Albert Fish described Wisteria Cottage, when the police went there, they discovered a horrific scene. They found more than 50 fingers, legs, and other bones. Albert Fish says he returned to the cottage and disposed of the remains by throwing them over a wall at the back of the property. Detectives would later find them in the exact spot that he described. Albert Fish is believed to be responsible for the murder of a four-year-old boy named Billy Gaffney. Billy had disappeared while playing with a neighbor in Brooklyn on February 11, 1927. That child would tell, later tell police that the boogeyman took Billy. The three-year-old boy described this boogeyman as a slender elderly man with gray hair and a gray mustache. At first, the cops didn't take this child seriously, but when they searched all over the neighborhood with no clues, they finally realized he had been abducted. He was never seen again. But after Fish's arrest, a motorman on Brooklyn trolley line came forward to identify him as a nervous old man. He saw on the same day Dilly had apparently disappeared. The old man was trying to quiet a little boy sitting next to him on the trolley who was crying for his mother. The man then dragged the little boy off of the trolley. Fish then admitted to the, the kidnapping and murder of Billy in sickening detail. I'm about to read out the extremely graphic letter about Billy Gaffney's murder. I whipped his bear behind till blood ran from his legs. I cut off his ears, nose, slit his mouth from ear to ear, gouged out his eyes. He was dead then. I stuck a knife in his belly and held my mouth to his body and drank his blood. Although no one was ever able to find Billy's remains, people were able to locate the body of Fish's third confirmed victim relatively quickly. In 1924, a young boy named Francis McDonnell vanished while playing with his brother and a group of friends on Staten Island. His body was found in the woods shortly after. He had been strangled by his own suspenders. Shortly before Albert Fish was put to death, he confessed to being the one who lured Francis into the woods, later assaulting and strangling him. He admitted he, that he was ready to dismember the boy, but he thought he heard someone approaching and fled the scene. Albert Fish is finally executed. Albert Fish was said to have a smile as he confessed his crimes. His trial clearly demonstrated that Fish was sane and guilty. The electric chair would be his fate.
In January 1936, shortly before he was executed, he was allowed to write a series of notes on his crimes to be handed over to journalists writing on the case. His lawyer took one look at the notes and refused to turn them over. He quoted, I will never show it to anyone, he said. It is the most filthy string of obscenities that I have ever read. Albert Fish's last words were, I don't even know why I'm here. His nicknames were Grey Man, the Werewolf of Wisteria, the Brooklyn Vampire, the Moon Manic, and the Boogeyman. Fish boasted that he had a child in every state. He stated his number of victims were about 100.